Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And I'm here to bring you my live paper crafting class. Yay! It is sa uh, Saturday. It's Wednesday, April 10th at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm coming to you live. And today I have a kit that I'm going to alter. I love to alter kits. I have been altering them since the first paper pumpkin kit came out in March of 2013. And now we have a kits collection kit line. And I am gonna play around with this really cute one. Now this, this kit is geared towards kids. It's, um, well, let me just show it to you here. Um, it is a kit called Frog and Friends. And you can see that you can make these really adorable little um, catch and uh, catch the ball kind of games right and so what i'm going to do the classic cup and ball game that's what it's called and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn these into gift card little pocket card holder things um so that those of you that aren't kids and have kids in your lives can turn these into really cute kinds of um, cards to celebrate birthdays and all those kinds of fun occasions that kids experience now the, the little animals are super cute. I wouldn't mind getting a card that has this cute little animal on it either. So, um, so I mean, you don't have to just send these to kids. It's just an adorable kit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and uh, this is the way the kit comes in this box. And this particular box, by the way, has a little warning label on it because it is marketed to children um, or for children, right? So I want to show you that really quick. On the outside of the box, you will see on the front a little warning that it has choking uh, little ha uh, little pieces that could be a choking hazard, and on the back side also. So that one's just a little unique. At first, I was like, "What is this for?" Um, so yeah, that's that's what's going on there. So let's go back here. Um, I want to introduce to you Trisha Josephs and Lisa Marshall. They are my moderators on Facebook and YouTube. Trisha's on YouTube and Lisa's on Facebook. Please give them a warm welcome. They do a really good job and they're working constantly to try to keep up with making sure they're answering questions and reading all the comments. And so um, give them three cheers. Yay! Thanks so much, Trisha and Lisa, for being there for us. Us. And um, I am going to introduce to you pocket cards. And what else do I want to do? I think I'll tell you about some promotions that are going on right, right now too. But we'll we'll do that a little bit later. We do have a prize drawing at the end of every live, so make sure that you're commenting because your comments get you entered into the prize drawing. If you're watching the video after the live is done, within a week. Uh, you can still comment in the after live area because that will get you entered into the after live prize drawing because we have names that were drawn this morning for the after live commenters from last week's video and you could get entered both ways, right? Um, I think that's all I need to tell you. Oh, this um, this video will be connected to my blog post and I um, usually do that. So every Wednesday when I do my online paper crafting class, shortly thereafter, I do have a blog post that um, gets shared on my blog at stampyourartout.com. And you can see photos of the projects, you can get measurements, you can see visual supplies that are connected to the online stores so that you can shop and purchase things. Um, and I think, well, oh, there's a PDF. So let's introduce you to the PDF. This is really fun. This is something that you can get your hands on and print off and you don't even have to worry about taking a screenshot now. If you want to, that's totally fine. But um, these are the things that we're going to make. Really cute pocket cards for gift cards, okay? So there we go. That PDF will be available to you. Let's move down to the desktop. And let's start creating. When you get your kit, you have an instruction booklet. And I'm just going to turn on something here on my computer screen. Sorry about that. You get an instruction little pamphlet, I should say, and it shows you how to put the project or cards together. So I'm going to set this one aside, though, because this is a fresh new kit, and we're going to actually use that as a prize drawing today. I'm going to instead bring out my pieces that are already ready to go. We're going to do the frog first. I'm going to zoom in just a tad here. Now the frog is very the frog pocket card is very similar to the um, frog uh, the cup and ball games. So when you when you put this together, 
you can first make the cup and, ball, uh, cup and ball game. So I'm just gonna fold on the lines that it tells you to do in the instructions. So you can see there's a slight overlap there. And that is for this adhesive piece here. And you don't wanna press down all the way if you're making the cup and ball game. You just wanna press in the little corners here and that will keep this nice and, um, I kinda of pressed too much, didn't I? That will keep that open like that so that you can catch the little fly that's gonna go in there. So let's take our adhesive and pull these off. And I'm just gonna bring one down first and then I'm gonna bring the other down. And this is how you would put it together if you were doing the cup and ball game. And then you'd add the eyeballs and the hands and the feet on the frog, okay? Another thing that you want to do with the cup and ball game is that you'd want to insert the string because it does come with some twine and you would want to attach that inside here between these um, back layers, these back edges, and then you just trim off any excess. And that would keep the string inside the container and that string would connect to the fly. But we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna flatten our frog. <laughs> we don't want the string in there because we're gonna make a little gift card holder. Now this size here is similar to all the sizes of the other animals. Good morning to all of you. It's so fun to see your comments roll in, by the way. Zoom in a tad on the frog. Oh, all right, certainly. We're kind of far away. Okay. Oh, and it's got little holographic pieces on it. Hope that helps. So this frog piece is large enough to hold a little sheet of cardstock in it. And so I've got some cardstock here and I have cut it to, and you know what? We'll just take our scraps and do that. We have cut the um, basic white one because there's going to be two layers involved here we're going to make a little insert for this. The basic white is two and a half by three and a quarter. So let's do two and a half. And then again, this is just, I just pulled this from my scraps by three and a quarter. And then we're just going to go an eighth of an inch more in measurement for the black so that we have a layer. So instead of two and a half, we're going to go to two and five eighths. By instead of three and a quarter, we're gonna to go to three and three quarter inches. Okay, so there is that, and now we have two pieces that can layer on top of each other. Let's tape those together. If you were going to stamp anything onto this piece, you'd want to do so at this point before you add it. I'm not going to do that because I do want to use these cards and I'm not sure what I'm using them for yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave this blank and stamp it later. But we do have some tuxedo black memento ink in here. And I'll show you the stamp sets that I would choose from, from the ones that I have available right now in my stash. But you probably have some others as well because this kit does not come with stamps and ink. So you would have to add that in if you're going to stamp on this. If you stamp on it and you make a mistake, you have the flip side. And that's why you want to stamp before you um, adhere, okay? So let's go ahead and just tape this down. And you can use your multi-purpose liquid glue. You can use your um, seal adhesive, whatever adhesive you like. So I made this slightly larger than the mouth of the frog because I want to be able to see something coming out of the frog's mouth. And that's where we come into those little stickers. So the, 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 the ball and um, what's it called again? It's called a cup and ball game. The, um, with the cup and ball game, these are the little pieces that you get to add your stickers to. So you get this sheet of stickers and you put one, si uh, one sticker on one side of the acrylic and the other sticker on the other side. So this would become obviously a worm, this would become a fly, and this would become a fish. We won't be using those today. They're a little thick, and for mailing purposes, I mean, the eyeballs in and of themselves are a little thick, so we're gonna leave those out. But I am gonna take one of these flies, and I'm going to imagine that fly going into this frog's mouth. So we're just gonna add the fly right on the edge, like that. And now we have the fly going into the frog's mouth and you can see a hint of it going in there. We still have room because we didn't make this super wide. We still have room 
to add a gift card to Panera or to wherever. I'm just going to insert that in there. So putting those in together, we have that size so far. Now let's bring in the envelopes because you're going to need to have a little bit of extra product when you alter a kit, mainly extra envelopes or some envelopes if you have a kit like this and then cardstock because um, that can expand the kit or allow you to make different cards with maybe like a stamp set if there's a stamp set involved. Um, so I always recommend white and black cardstock and um, white envelopes. And then of course you want to have all those tools. So let's take our envelopes. We have a medium size envelope. You could use larger because then your frog can spread out his legs a little bit more, but we're going to add our legs and arms to our frog now. This is so very easy, you guys. It's just such a fun kit too. So we have legs and little arms for our frog. And you can see they already come with little stickers on them, okay? So I'm gonna take and peel off the backing for that. Make sure this is centered and you wanna have your envelope positioned above your card, uh, above your, I'm sorry, you want to have your card positioned above your envelope as you do this. You also want to have just a little bit of leeway at the top and the bottom so that you have room to kind of get that, um, that, uh, that piece, that card inside. Okay, so we're going to add our leg like that on that side. See how I'm doing that? I'm just eyeballing the edges of the envelope. And I'm making sure that they're as symmetrical as possible. We don't want to have a, a frog that looks lopsided. And then we got the arms. And the arms don't have shininess on them, so you could really attach it so that they're either on top like that, which I think is weird, or you could shove them underneath. <laughs> and we're just going to lift that up and stick that under. And now we have our cute little frog almost done. You know what he's missing? He's missing some eyeballs. And like I said, the kit does come with eyeballs. You actually get a couple extra eyeballs even. I cut mine into sets of two. So if you are okay with a little bit of bulk in your envelopes, you can use the eyeballs that come in the kit. Okay, there we go. Let's match the envelope because you have another sticker. You have a fly sticker looking the other direction that would have gone on the other side of the acrylic. So you can take your fly and you can add a little bit, here it is, a little bit of black marker behind it so that that fly looks as if it has been moving through the room. <laughs> and you can do your dashes however you want. If you need to, you could do like a light pencil line before you start, start drawing the dashes. But my card is ready to go, except I have to sign it. And you can see it will fit right in there. Gift card and all. Okay, let's do the second one. We're building up to the hardest ones. We have the next one, which is the shark. So let's bring the shark in. So the shark will bend in this direction because that's where the bend line is, the fold line I should say. And then you can fold here and you can connect these two sides together like that. So let's do that. Let's pretend like we're doing the cup and ball game. But before we do that actually we have to add the tail. Oh, that's the tough part. So let's, um, let's grab an envelope again. So the tail or the fin, the back fin, um, I'm just gonna show you with this. So if you have your card sticking out of your shark, okay, if you have your card sticking out of there, it's gonna need a little bit of room, just like we did on the, on the frog. So with your tail, you almost have to like lay this card down first on the inside and see how much room here you have and actually shove it forward just a little bit more 
And that's about how much room you, you would have because you have to think about the fact that it can't come all the way up to that adhesive line, right? You're gonna need a little bit of gappage there. So we're gonna, we're gonna set it down right there. Same thing with our little card insert. We'll just, I mean, they're the same size. So the card insert is there, the card, the gift card is there, and we wanna have a little bit of extra envelope on the edge here. So when you add this tail, if you add it right in that spot, you're gonna see it goes beyond the envelope. So instead what I did is I trimmed off the adhesive end of that so that it can go in a little bit further and not affect the gift card. So now here I can add a little bit of adhesive and I'm just gonna do that with a thin line here. This is the side of the fish that I want to be my front because this is going to go, this little seam part is going to go to the back. So let's lay that on there again. You need your envelopes. <laughs> lay that on there again. Add that tail so that it's still within the envelope. And you want the shiny side of the tail up, okay? <laughs> All right, so there's that. And now I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to peel this off and we can connect them. And I'm not connecting them flat this time because I want to show you something that I didn't show you with the frog. Okay, so connect it and connect it here. See, this makes it all like rounded on the edge if you don't flatten it all the way out. It really makes the cup and ball game work much better if you don't crease all the way through. But we're gonna crease all the way through again. So there we have our shark. We have a shiny side and we have the non-shiny side as far as the tail goes. Again, this is towards the back for me because I didn't like the seam showing on the front. So it's kind of backwards looking because you typically, you know, most people will pull out something from the right side. This is the perfect card for my left-handed child. All right. So let's test it out again before we go further. Here's our card and our, uh, our gift card. And we're just going to shove that into the mouth, push it in there, lay it on the envelope. Yay, it's within the envelope. Okay, perfect. Let's add our stamped. We don't have it stamped, but let's add our pretend stamped little insert here and our gift card and it helps if you keep everything inside as you're decorating and putting the card together because then you have um, you have a little bit of knowledge about how thick it's going to be how things are going to be affected once you get the card in there and the and the gift card okay so there we have that if this is the front we can put one of these eyeballs on there but if we do that on the back side, you're gonna have a really, really thick card. So I'm gonna show you another option. If you don't wanna use these googly eyes, which I think still are super darn cute, you can take this scrap portion of your kit and a punch. And I just got this off of Amazon. You can find it in my favorite extras because Stampin' Up! does not sell smaller circle punches like this. This is the 3 8 inch circle punch. And I'm just gonna punch out however many eyeball whites I want. And then from a scrap, I'm gonna take a quarter inch punch. And most of the office supply punches, and again, this is in my favorite extras if you need one, most of them are the quarter inch diameter. This circle is not the exact size of the white um, eyeball that comes in the kit, but I tried it out with a half inch punch and that's not quite right either. So on this side of your shark, and you can use white scrap. Did I say that? You certainly can use white scrap if you want to. I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool, stick that onto the, oops, the gummy end, and just lay that over the top. And then we'll do that again with the black. And this is where it gets to be fun because you can decide you know, which direction your eyeball is looking. Pick that up, lay it down. There we go. There's our fish coming together, our shark, sorry. Now we need the 
other fins, we need the top fin and then the ones that go on the side. And forgive me, I don't know all the parts of a shark. We're going to bend this. Do you see the adhesive there? The adhesive wants to be on the outside. And if you look at it this way, you want that to be on this side. And we're just going to connect it where that little dash is, like that. So he still has a little bit of um, dimension when you pull the card out of the envelope. Let's do the same thing with this piece, which will go on the front. And that's going to go here and cover up that little dash piece. And then do you see this? The top fin goes right here. So that just can get connected flat. You don't have to worry about bending it. And because we knew that this, this shark was not very high, we knew that that fin would also fit in the envelope. So what do we put on the uh, fish little card? We're going to put, I'm sorry, the, the um, shark card. We're going to put a fish that is trying to, let me look at my other one. Yes, trying to escape. So we're just going to add that this way. And there is our cute little insert with our gift card into our shark's mouth. The fish is trying to escape and then you can put this fish on your envelope too. This is how I did it on my finished envelope. I just took the marker and drew little tiny circles going up for bubbles. So there's that one. And now let's do our last one. Our last one was the challenging one. This was challenging because if you look at the little instruction sheet here, you can see that not only is it super long, so you could have like a slimline card if you wanted to, but it's got like three dimensions to it already with the way that these side fins are going. Okay, so you almost have to have it flat, like you can't flatten it this way with the, the fins going that way. So I had to alter it big time. This one, instead of folding where those little notches are, do you see those? You can see them better on the back side here. There's one and there's the other. Instead of folding there, I decided to fold it in half and I wanted it to go right between the eyes. So I had to take my trimmer again and I lined it up so that my, um, my little channel of my trimmer here was going right through the center of the fish like that. And I put a little crease in there to help fold it. So now when you fold it like this, you're also not going to get an exact um, meeting up on this edge. And that's okay because you want to have a little bit where you can connect the two sides like we did on the shark. So at this point, we're going to take and lay it in like this, move that up and away, and we're going to score. And I believe it's three inches. Yeah, they're three inches. So this is now going to fold inward and be our connector for that side. Okay? Alrighty, next. I have marker on my finger. <laughs> All right, so you see this? This little adhesive up here? That's going to be an issue because it is not going to connect. It's not going to line up. So then we had to remove this. So you peel this off, and then you remove this. And you can use an adhesive eraser. You can use your finger and just roll it like this. It depends on you know, how much skin you want to have left over when you're, when you're done. But you can't really take and pull it because it is very, very thin adhesive. So this is a tool that I've used in the past. I have found my finger, though, is much better at this than the adhesive eraser. So I'm going to keep going with my thumb. We have to attach the tail part, the, the, the back fin, um, in order to put this together, though, before we seal up the sides, just like we did with the shark. So I'm going to take that back fin and I'm going to lay it, all of it on top of my envelope. And you're going to see, so that, yeah, that's the hardest. Take some effort, some muscle. Okay, so we need to have uh, another envelope brought in. 
We're going to fold this over like that. And we can have our fish facing in either direction, whatever you choose. I think I'm just going to have it face this way, <laughs> even though the seam is here. Um, you can choose either direction. Okay, let's grab that back tail part. It's super long, as you can see. So again, you could choose to have like a longer envelope. Whatever you want for your envelope, you would want to, um, <laughs> thanks Tanji, you would want to have, um, you know, laid down in front of you as you're assembling each gift card, because that's really going to be your guide. So what I thought would be kind of cool, oh, and I know why I used the fish going in this direction, because I wanted the holographic side of my tail fin to show. So if you go in this direction, then you know, you'd have to go like this, which you could do, but then your tail looks a little awkward. So we're gonna go in this direction, and we're gonna flip the tail this way, and we're just gonna angle it down, which means we can bring our head up a little higher because there's no, is that called a dorsal fin? There's no dorsal fin on the top of this. This is a fish, not a shark. And we have to, of course, remember that we have a gift card. Okay, so our gift card, lays in there like that and we need to have a little room for that so kind of position where your fish will be and then you can guess where your tail can go and that should work I think let me just open this up yep we could go a little further if we really want to push it just a little bit okay so if I lay that down there with about three-eighths of an inch on this side of my envelope, I can have my tail positioned like that. Let us open this up. And let's just do a, a little line here. I'll just use my black marker that I have here. I'm just going to draw a line down there so I know where to cut. All right, now let's take and trim that. And let's bring in our wonderful tear and tape adhesive. This is some awesome adhesive. It's just as strong as this stuff that's in here too. It's kind of like the same thing. So we need a bit of that extending so that not just this portion, not just the top half is sealed shut, but the bottom half is. So now we have our tape extended. We also want to add our little back tail fin, right? So let's peel off all of this. Eh, hang on. Get your fingernail under there or grab the take your pick tool, Rachel. Okay, fine. It's because this thing's on my hand. There we go. All right, there is the backing. We'll peel that off. Now we have to be careful because we don't want this to seal all the way shut yet. We have about three eighths of an inch on this side. We can have it all the way to the top. And then we can bring the tail in and we can lay it down like that. Now we can take and put this extra tear and tape, tear and tape adhesive over the top. Grab our take your pick tool. Separate the release paper. And one more area of tape is needed. We have to connect this to up here before we push this all the way down. So to do that, tear and tape adhesive again. And I'm just gonna measure out the length of it with my hands, my eyeballs visually here, tear it off. I'm gonna grab it and put it onto this surface. So it's not quite all the way to the edge. You can see a, like a tiny little gap there. Okay, we don't wanna go all the way to the edge, but we wanna, wanna go close. We'll peel off. We're having separation issues today. We'll peel off the backing and then we'll just fold it over onto itself. So you don't have to worry about trimming the tape down the middle. That would be a lot of work, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and connect that. Press this in, connect that. Make sure it's all flat as you go. You can use your bone folder. So yeah, this guy, he takes the most work, but in the end, he's so pretty. Okay, so there we go. It's going to fit, right? Now we can use those other fins right along the sides here. So we have two of them. 
This one's going to go on this side. We just peel off that backing, lay it down like that. And then you can use this fin here as a guide when you're adding the other one because you can see it sort of through the back here. So we'll add that here, line them up. All right, here's the front. Again, you can choose if you want to do a little googly eye or not. I'm going to just because they're stinking cute. And I don't mind putting a non-machinable stamp on my cards. <laughs> but if you don't want to do that and you want to have your card as flat as possible when you mail it, just punch out your eyeballs. And you would want to do the same thing with your back eyeball. So let's punch that. Grab a black scrap. Where did my eyeball go? I lost it. We'll do. Oh, here it is. There it is. There we go. And then we need some black scrap. Oops, with the other punch. Punch like that. Release it. Let it go. Do you know these punches come with these little these little trays? I've had an old one for the longest time. I finally invested in a new one, and I love it. And it's just like my old one used to be. <laughs> the little um. The little tray holds all of those tiny little pieces in there so that you don't have a mess all over your table. Okay, grab our white, stick that down, add a little bit more glue, add our black. Ooh, he's looking straight at me. Scary. Let's make it go forward a little bit. Okay. <laughs> all right. There's that. Let's attach this together here. So then we've got the worm. The worm goes with the little beautiful fish. I don't know what kind of fish this is. Is it an angel fish, you guys? I don't know. Um, so let's put our stamped card and our gift card, pretend it's stamped. Let's put that into the mouth and let's take a look at that sticker that would go with this little gift card. And that sticker is somewhere. Here it is. So we now have the little worms left. And I thought it would be fun if one of the worms, because you have to pick the one that will work. This one, if you put that one on, it's going to look like it's crawling inside. But we want, again, the worm trying to escape. So we want to see a little bit of the eyeball there. And we're just going to add the worm right here. And stick it back in there. Isn't that cute? The worm's trying to get out. And then the, car, the um, envelope that you would do for that is just take your little worm guy here, lay him down in the corner, and then take your marker and just add some ground underneath, right? That's all you need, because worms like to crawl. <laughs> so we have our envelopes. There's our three cute envelopes. Let me zoom out a bit now. <laughs> so I hope that you visit my blog later on today. It will go live at 12.15, which is in about 45 minutes. And you'll be able to see photos of these cute little guys. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun, you guys. Yay! Oh, you can't see the fishy envelope. Hang on. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more. Kit alternates. I love to share kit alternates. If you have a kit that you own, um, either from the kits collection or from Paper Pumpkin, just go to my website, stampyourartout.com, click on blog, and then there's a search bar. And you can actually click in the search bar and put like one of the unique name naming parts of the kit. Like for this one, I would put frog, right? or friends or something. I wouldn't put the whole thing frog and friends because you're going to have all kinds of frog and friend related things in there. Um, but frog would be more specific. Uh, if you wanted to um, like also go on Pinterest, you could do that too. Um, you can follow me on Pinterest. I pin everything from my website and I try to pin other things too, ideas from other people. But you can go to Pinterest and look me up or you can just um, search on Google to find alternate project ideas. Okay, so let's go back to um, 
I know what I'm doing next. I'm going to talk about some promotional stuff happening. Um, so we have new products that release regularly and every two months you see something new, whether it's online exclusives or whether it is a new catalog. And this is the release of the new catalog coming up on May 1st. Um, the annual catalog lasts the whole year, which makes sense because it's an annual catalog. So we haven't had a new ca annual catalog since last May. It's a big deal because it's our biggest publication. When the annual catalog comes out and debuts on May 1st, new products are going to come into play and you'll be seeing some of those in my upcoming lives and blog posts. But also that means that we don't have room for everything and some things have to retire. As of yesterday, April 9th, we have um, begun our last chance sale. So let me take and show you my current publications now. I'm just going to whisk you guys off to the side for a minute. Sorry about that. But this is last year's annual catalog and this winter's um, mini catalog. Um, sorry, I say winter because I live in the Northern Hemisphere. But if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you would say, what, summer? Okay, so January through April 2024. Um, and then this is May through April. So this one lasts the whole year. This one's a four-monther. But inside, and I've already marked my own copy because I took and looked at my um, my lists. You can access the retiring product lists on my website at the bottom of any post. You can get access to those lists. But I've already marked my own personal catalogs with what is leaving, what is on sale. A quick way to, quicker way to find those things, so, though, so if you're wanting to see what's retiring, what's leaving, is you're going to go to, and I'm going to bring you over there, you're going to go to the online store. So we are in the online store right now at stampinup.com. Okay. You can also access this by clicking shop on my blog. But when you get here, you're going to see this little um, information banner going, you know, like changing every so often. And once in a while, it'll come up with this one. This is one you want to click on, but you can also find it by clicking on specials. Once you click on specials, you can get to last chance products and you'll see all the things that are retiring. If it says sale or savings, you can take advantage of saving money when purchasing it. If it's something that was on the list and it's not here in the store anymore, that means it's sold out. And I have to tell you that there's lots of things that have sold out by now. Um, warned you all uh, about a month ago when I was sharing the new in colors after I got back from on stage, uh, that things would be selling out and sure enough, there's stuff that is gone. So you'll want to take a peek at that sooner than later so that you don't miss out on some products that are of interest to you. Okay. Again, anytime you go to my website and you click in a blog post, you can go here to get there, or you can go to the actual latest blog post or whatever, or you can click shop online. But if you go to one of my blog posts and you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see information about any promotion. So here is the last chance products promotion. Click here to learn more. This is where you would get to those lists. Um, online exclusives, those get, those get released uh, three times a year too. So we have a new annual every year. We have two mini catalogs that debut. And then we have in between, we have releases of online exclusives. So if you're interested in that. And I do still have logo merchandise. Let me tell you about Kit's collection stuff though, right? So I just shared with you the kit that is the Frog and Friends kit. Um, that one was released a couple months ago. These two are the latest ones that were just released at the beginning of April. And I am going to be playing around with this one soon. I just made a bunch of um, alternates with that. So, so super excited about that kit. And then this one will come in the future. I haven't made anything from it yet, but I have both of them. Speaking of kits, this is the other kit line. So we have the kits that you can actually see and shop from. You can click here or click in the kits collection to see the actual kits. But then we have these surprise kits. And this is the first kit line that Stampin' Up! came out with um, years back in, again, March 2013. Uh, this is the Paper Pumpkin kit line. And these are surprises. So they give you hints of what's going to be in each kit. And only subscribers get to find out 
when it gets mailed to them what's inside the kit and they have the kit in hand. If you don't subscribe, you'll see pictures, but you will have missed out on what was, you know, the kit. You, you can't get the full kit anymore. Um, you can sign up to be a, a Paper Pumpkin subscriber and get in on past kits that are still available in the online store, but they're usually not full kits. They're usually kits that don't have the actual stamp images and inks. So as of today, the 10th of the month, today is the last day to make sure that you're subscribed for the April Delicate Wings Kit. And again, you can go to my promotions area. You can click here to sign up. If you're already a subscriber, just um, and you like, let's say it's on hold and you want the kit, just log in at www.paperpumpkin.com and activate your kit again, your kit subscription again. Um, trying to think if there's any other things before we go on to prizes. Let me take a peek at my list. We talked about all of that. Um, new catalog debuting May 1st, sharing new in colors. Um, new in colors is next week. I have been playing around with the new in colors and I'm so excited to share with you uh, some cards that I've created with them. So next week on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time, I'll be live again along with Trisha and Lisa to help me moderate and I'll be sharing with you the in color products with, within these cards. And I think that is it. Those of you that are joining me for the kit together this weekend, we're gonna have tons of fun. Thank you for signing up for the kit together. Um, if you are not aware of kit togethers, you'll want to make sure that you're subscribed to my website and to my newsletter so that you can hear about upcoming events. Let's bring the prizes in that we had from last week. I have to pull those up so I can remember. Oh, last week was our all-star blog hop. So it was tutorial of choice. Okay. You can choose a tutorial that you like. So let me show you how to find those. Let's go back over to my website. And we're just going to scroll all the way to the top, but we'll see the full menu here. Shop. You want to click on this, and then you're going to scroll down to Tutorials, Logo Items, and more. And you're going to click on Tutorials. And that will take you to an area of my online store where you can pick out which tutorial you want if you're one of these names. So let's go and, and sorry, there's tons of them, by the way like pages and pages. See all those pages? Okay, I'm going to come back here because I want to make sure I'm switching screens correctly. Okay, here we are. All right, so for our first winner for After Live Comments, we have someone from our YouTube. This is YouTube? Yeah, this is YouTube. At YouTube After Live Commenters. And there is my um, email address. You want to reach out to me at my email address at stampyourartout at comcast.net so that you can claim your prize. So Sharon Vangsrod, 4248, congratulations. You are the winner, but you need to reach out to me within a month's time, okay? If you live outside the U.S. and you, um, and I'm like talking about product type prizes, you can choose a tutorial as well. So you can pick from that. So everybody can be a winner no matter where they're viewing from in the U.S. My other winner is from Facebook, and that person is Ted Kareen Haas. Um, congratulations to both of you for being prize winners. Again, this was after live winners from last week's video, and the prize that week was a tutorial of your choice. So that brings me over to my desktop because I want to show you what the prizes are this week. And before I do that, these are not the prizes, but I want to show you this because I forgot to. And hang on, I'm here. There I am. These are stamp sets that I would recommend if you were going to stamp onto those little cards that come with the kit. Layering Leaves is a great stamp set for adding to kits. You've got all those different kind of year-round um, all-occasion stamps. Best Family Ever would be so fun with this Frog and Friends kit to make some gift card, pocket card type things with. Submarine Life, just because you've got a happy birthday, which is general, but then you've got the floating by to say hi You've got the Your Sublime and Sending Oceans of Love. Those sentiments would be so great with a gift card type of card. And Attention Shoppers is going to be debuting in May. This one is a fun one for gift cards for sure. Treat yourself. Shopping is always a good idea just for you. Happy birthday. So those are my suggestions. And I would just use like Tuxedo Black ink if you're going to do that. What are the prizes for this week's winners? For those of you that have been commenting, we have uh, Trisha Josephs who's going to call out names, but let me tell you what the prize choices are. 
This is a kit that I played with a while back. It is called Love This Memory Notebook Kit, and it's a $25 value plus shipping and tax um, in the US. And I did create parts um, with this kit, but I inserted those cards that I created with it in here. I didn't use that stamp set, I used a different one. So this is a fresh new stamp set in there. Um, a fresh new thing of ink is in, there it is. Um, the tape, everything's fresh and new. I only used a few consumables in there and then I replaced those consumables with the cards I finished. So that is um, one prize. Another prize is another leftover kit. There's tons of stuff in here, even though it doesn't look like it, but it makes one of those countdown to Christmas um, type of projects. And there's lots of stuff in there to use for making some of the cute cards that I shared with that kit at one point. There's also, if you love to do like kit creations, twine is always good to have more of. Okay, so this is a, a fresh new twine pack called Baker's Twine Essentials. And then the last thing is this kit. Now this is a cheaper kit. It's like $12, $13 or something like that, but it's still a great kit to have. So if you're um, one of the prize winners that Trisha calls out, you get to pick from one of those items. And now I'm going to peek, put my email address back up there and check to see. She may have called out the winner. So I'm just going to scroll back and she has the winners. Um, today's winners, we have two of them. We have Barbara Albers and Cynthia Schmidt. Congratulations to both of you. Yay, Barbara Albers and Cynthia Schmidt. Um, and if that comment rolls up in here, I can try to tag it also. Those of you that um, have been coming to my lives, I thank you so much. Please click the thumbs up. Um, please visit each week if you can, if you'd like to, because it's so much fun creating with um, more people than just myself and my moderators. <laughs> Although I would love it if, you know, Trisha and Lisa were hanging out with me. But I love it when we're having a party. So keep coming back. Keep watching, please. Share with your friends. Um, you can take and share links for videos to people via email, via Facebook, all that sort of thing. Let them know what you've been watching. Um, let's make it more of a party. And if you have not been watching my videos, you'll want to subscribe so that you can get notifications for when I go live. And I'll be going live a little bit more often in the coming year. I have some fun stuff to share with you. Uh, looking for that comment so I can tag it and I don't see it yet. Hang on, I'm gonna scroll really quick, Trisha. Let's see if I can tag your comment for the winners so we can see those names come up here. Yeah, they are just not coming up on my... Anyways, again, I'll call them out. Barbara Albers and Cynthia Schmidt, congratulations to you and congratulations to the other two winners that we called out. Thank you all for coming. I think that is all I needed to share. So now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. See you next week. Bye-bye.